Hola, soy Christopher Go. Estoy aquí en Madrid con Azul City. Now, first of all, we need to choose the right location for image. You know, a lot of people would say seeing is everything. Well, it's true that when you get good seeing, it's easier to image planet. But sometimes, seeing isn't everything. There might be some small details that you neglect that will contribute to basically degrade your image, even though the seeing is good. Now, choosing the right location is very important. You have to choose a location which is away from heat sources. Normally, heat sources are chimneys, uh, air conditioning, even the hot cement, what I would do is, example, the floor is hot, I would normally spray water into it to cool it down. Now, the next thing you should do before you start imaging is go to this website. This will show you where the jet stream is. Now, if you are over the jet stream, I would recommend you go back to sleep or you do not do imaging because, you know, it'll be hopeless. So with this website, you will know whether it's okay to image the planets or not. But of course, nothing will go wrong if you try, because who knows, even if you have a jet stream, things, you, uh, your lo local location might, be, might have better seeing than uh, what is predicted. Now, this is a very important step. You need to cool your OTA. You need to cool your telescope. Why? Because if your telescope is not on ambient temperature, what's going to happen is that you will have a terrible image, even though the seeing is very good. You need to take time to cool down the telescope. There are, fact, there are ways to uh, increase the speed of uh, cooling your telescope, like having a cooler. Uh, what I right, uh, right now, I use a cat cooler from Limax to speed up the cooling of my telescope. Now, the thing is, the bigger your telescope, the longer the time it takes to cool down your telescope. I have a C14 and in my case, it takes me three hours to cool my telescope. Now, here's another important thing. You need to collimate your telescope with the camera on, not visually. Because the alignment of your telescope with the camera on, with a barlow, filter wheel, and flip mirror, is different from your eyepiece. So you need to make a live view, and here, this is the instruction on how to do it. You need to use the uh, your uh, with the camera on. Uh, have a star, which is basically 70 degrees or, or above above the horizon. Choose a day where the scene is good, so it'll be easier to collimate. And if you have a camera with a hot, large field of view, uh, use it. Now, what, you, what, what I would normally do is when I do collimation is that, you know, I, I get the, the, the telescope uh, out of focus. Then uh, I use a red filter because red filter is, or an infrared filter is less affected with seeing. And uh, what I try to do is make the ring uh, uh, even because when you're using a very high uh, magnification, uh, sometimes if your telescope is not collimated, the ring will be bright on one side. So you, what you try to do is to make the ring, uh, the, 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 the ring, the, the brightness of the ring even. This will take time, take time, probably half an hour to one hour to perfect your collimation because if your telescope is not collimated, even though the seeing is 10 over 10, you will never get a good image. So please take care on collimating your telescope. Then if you're using a large telescope like a C11 or a C14, make sure that you lock your mirror. Because what's going to happen during the time when you image, as the telescope goes through the sky, the mirror will sag down because of gravity and the focus will change and sometimes this happens after you know even sometimes a few minutes and uh, it's difficult to keep on re refocusing again and again 
if you use your mirror lock, some telescopes have built-in mirror locks. Use it, and uh, basically it will help you um, uh, keep the focus perfect. Before you start imaging, you use with Dupos, and uh, there's a there's a function there, uh, the tool there called Ephemerides, where you can see what's going on with different planets. You can see which, whether the great red spot or other features of Jupiter are in transit, or you can see that the, the position of the different moons of the planets. So please use WinduPost to check everything so you know what you're imaging.